From children's toys in ancient China to Da Vinci's famous ornithopter, helicopters have a rich and fascinating history. Here we take a look at man's quest to achieve vertical flight, the ones that didn't fly, and the history of the aircraft that would forever change the way we view avionics. Before we get started make sure to like the video, subscribe my channel and hit the bell icon. The Early History of the Helicopter Ancient China is where the concept of vertical flight, which allows an aircraft to hover, take off, and land vertically, first appeared. According to historians, children in China were playing with toys that used the idea of vertical lift, which involves climbing up using a propeller, as early as 400 BC. These toys used the fundamental concept of helicopters that we are all familiar with, the rotating blade attached to a shaft that could be spun in your hands or moved by a string. Leonardo da Vinci, however, was inspired by birds when he created the iconic drawing of his ornithopter flying contraption decades later rather than toys. The Greek words ornithos, bird, and teron, wing are the origin of the word ornithopter. In his painting of a human-powered flying machine from 1485, he claimed the flight of avian creatures as his inspiration, particularly the flight of bats and birds. Unfortunately for da Vinci, it took his ornithopter over 300 years to actually fly, and even then, the initial attempts were unsuccessful. A polymath frequently referred to as the Russian da Vinci, Mikhail Lomonosov set the next major milestone in the quest for vertical flight in 1754. Lomonosov created a device he thought would aid in raising meteorological equipment into the air. To prevent the torque from a single propeller forcing the machine to spin in the other way, the design featured two propellers revolving in opposite directions on the same axis, a concept known as coaxial. Sir George Cayley, dubbed the father of aviation, was the next to jump on the vertically propelled bandwagon, which is a very true description of what some of these early designs looked like. Cayley, an engineer and inventor, identified the four main forces of flight, weight, lift, drag, and thrust, as well as their relationship. Cayley experimented with a concept he termed the aerial carriage, in 1843 because he was determined to figure out how to lift his heavier-than-air vehicles off the ground. Although Cayley's flying machine, like da Vinci's ornithopter, never ever flew, it took a lot of influence from his work because it had four rotating propellers in the shape of umbrellas. Gustave Vicomte de Ponton d'Aincourt, a French academic who was interested in vertical flight, coined the term, helicopters, in 1863 to characterize his flying devices. The word was created from the letters Teron and Helix, the Greek adjective for spiral. The helicopter now had a name, but the Frenchman was still unable to lift off with it. Over the ensuing 60 years, scientists and innovators continued to struggle with the issue of vertical flight including the legendary inventor Thomas Edison, who gave up the project after engine testing in his laboratory resulted in an explosion. By the turn of the 20th century, helicopters were still incapable of flight. Lift off By achieving powered flight in an aircraft built by the Wright brothers, two self-taught but tenacious engineers, aviation history was made in 1903. And four years later, Louis and Jacques Breguet, another pair of brothers, made the first vertical climb in their gyroplane number no. one craft. It only stayed in the air for around two minutes and only for a small distance above the ground, but it was nevertheless a breakthrough and a more convincing one than French inventor Paul Cornu's helicopter, which could only hover for 20 seconds at a height of one foot. Going places Juan de la Serva, a Spaniard, discovered that a propeller's blades required to be hinged in order for them to flap and change their speed in relation to one another, which solved the stability issue. This was excellent news for the pilot as well because it made for a more pleasant flight, because the blades were held in position by centrifugal forces rather than being firmly linked to the rotor. De La Sierva's autogyro No. 4 is usually regarded as the first successful vertical flight having completed a 4km circuit around Madrid in 1923. Sikorsky, father of helicopters. The Germans started working hard on the vertical flying industry in the 1930s. Heinrich Fock and Gold Achkelis established the business Fock Achkelis with the goal of producing helicopters, building on de la Sierva's design. 
the key distinction between the Spaniard's Autogyro No. 4 and their FA-61, commonly known as the Focke Wolf 61, was that the latter featured powered rotors. The Globe saw footage of the helicopter flying around a stadium, proving their success. Refinement and Innovation The helicopter would go through countless new designs and advancements over the following several decades as engineers and scientists worked to increase flight stability and comfort while also extending flight periods. One of the notable achievements was the Frank N. Piasecki design PV-2, which offered greater stability than Sikorsky's design and was less expensive to construct. The PV-2 was an improvement on the Platt LePage designed XR1 type. The Model 47, created by Larry Bell, had two additional passenger seats in addition to a more potent engine. Over 15,000 wounded soldiers were finally evacuated from various battlefields by the Model 47, demonstrating its viability. Next came the need for speed. Stanley Hiller, an aviation entrepreneur, developed the first helicopter with entirely metal blades, which allowed the aircraft to fly at much higher speeds. He also piloted the first helicopter to fly across the entire United States, the Hiller 360. Present-day helicopters Da Vinci's ornithopter, which was inspired by birds, is a long cry from modern helicopters. The early innovators' predictions that vertical flight would displace the car as a mode of personal transportation were also untrue. However, in recent years, the helicopter has begun to play an increasing number of civilian tasks, including supporting law enforcement, responding to medical emergencies, battling fires, and being utilized by news crews and for personal transportation. Now you may fly across the continent in your private helicopter charter, finish your business meeting while it waits, and fly back to your house in time for dinner. Sikorsky may come up while you evaluate your possibilities for helicopter charter. The Sikorsky X2, which broke a world record for helicopter speed at 415 km per hour, and the Sikorsky S92, which can accommodate 19 passengers in the utmost luxury and comfort and acts as a castle in the sky, are some of the leading lights of the contemporary helicopter business. Additionally, the Russian-built Mil Mi-26 can lift an aeroplane if you need to carry a particularly big weight. It's tempting to make predictions about the future of vertical flying given how commonplace helicopters are in our daily lives. Drones and experimental hovercraft even imply that the early goal of using helicopters for personal transportation might not be as far-fetched as previously thought. The future, what about it? It's feasible that one day we'll have our own personal flying aircraft and be circling the cities like the Jetsons. Science fiction authors and filmmakers certainly appear to believe this. But will we be traveling to and from work on our personal helicopter-like segways? Will personal hovercraft or helicopters ever take the place of the vehicle as the primary mode of personal transportation? All we can do is wait and see. This was the evolution of the helicopter. We hope you like the video. Please subscribe to my channel and hit the bell icon for more videos about the evolution of things. Thank you for watching.